As a global company, it's important that you make the right decision in the short and the medium term. And clearly, due to the very tense war situation in Eastern Europe, we needed to take a position in Russia. And that's why we suspended our business in Russia, despite the fact that we've been there for many, many years. You know, we have 6,000 people, and we continue to pay our employees. But it's also important that we look upon it in the greater context. We need to protect our employees and mitigate the situation through donations and, and emer emergency help to the entire region, and particularly employees in, in Ukraine. And then we need to make certain that we run the rest of the company forward to make certain that we continue to grow as a business. And I don't mean to sound cynical, but it's getting the balance between the two right, because Russia is about 2% of our revenue, and we still need to take care of that and also make certain that we uh, further develop the 98% mm. of the revenue, which is the global revenue. Is it an indefinite suspension, or are there plans to return to that market when the war is over? I think that this is premature. You know, the war has been going on for two weeks, and at this stage, we're taking the right decision at this moment. I don't think anybody could have dreamt about that. And I think it's very difficult to make any dogmatic decision at this stage. We're making the decision in the context of where we are, along with many, many other multinationals. So we're doing that, and of course, we will deal with the situation as the world moves on. But right now, we're trying to, you know, I would say, uh, deal with that situation immediately in the right way and at the same time as grow our company in 2022 by double digit and that, you know getting that balance right is very important you you did give a double digit sales forecast 11 to 13 percent growth which is better than what the street was expecting the stock is reacting what's the primary driver is it still north america we saw a very, very strong growth in EMEA, North America, and Latin America last year. So 70 percent of the business, which are these three regions, grew 23 percent. We expect you know, very strong growth in North America, also moving forward. Uh, with the lead team we're in place, uh, with the new arrangements we're in place, with Jerry Lorenzo that we're starting to execute uh, this year. And of course, we're excited about Gucci. So North America is a key driver, and that's why following a 17 percent growth last year, we also expect double-digit growth in North America this year. So we're actually quite optimistic about what the sporting goods market and the leisure market will bring for us also in this year, despite all the external factors. Are you seeing any slowdown in consumer spending in the U.S., which has been so robust as stimulus fades? And the pandemic does as well? No, we've not seen any slowdown in consumer spend. What we did see in the fourth quarter and we'll see in the first quarter is the impact of the factory closures in Vietnam, which were closed completely for a quarter, the third quarter, and the continued congestion of the ports in the U.S. But the underlying consumer spend you know, still remains very, very healthy in the U.S., and we expect that to be the case also for the year to come. We might get more inflation, which will impact the prices, but overall, we expect a very healthy consumer spend, which is resulting in the double-digit guidance for the U.S. How much pricing power do you have? I know you've already taken higher prices. What, what does that look like? I think that you know, we'll be pricing in the mid-single digits moving forward to offset a lot of the input costs that are coming, whether it's raw material or over the last 12 to 18 months, very, very high growth in, uh, in transportation costs. So we do have pricing power, but of course pricing power comes around with brain heat and new cool products. And that's our obligation to make certain that we, I would say, feed the markets with cool products where the consumers say, I really want to have that product. But we are still in an affordable luxury space. You have to remember that most of our products, are, from mm. a shoe standpoint, are between 60 and $200. So it is a, an affordable investment when you get into Adidas to get a good product. Are the supply chain issues getting any better? Or, or they're just, for a while now, going to be problematic? I think you have to differentiate in our case in two buckets. You know, the closure of, of Vietnam has completely changed around, and right now we're more or less manufacturing at previous levels, you know, 98% so previous levels. And we continue to see disruption in the shipping, uh, you know, in the shipping and the distribution side, and, and I think that will continue throughout uh, most of 22. And that's also part of the way we guide for this year, and these are the assumptions. So we think that we might get a slight, you know, normalization by the end of the year, but we still expect, you know, a quite disruptive year when it comes to shipping. And as you can see outside a lot of large ports, you know, particularly LA, you continue to have a container buildup, which means that sometimes products are getting laid into the North American marketplace. That has infected our business, but it affects us more in one or the other quarter. Over the medium term, actually, it even itself out. So we still see it. China has been a challenge for you and, and some of the other North American sportswear brands. I know ahead of the results, you instated a new head of the business over there. What, what has it been? Is it the boycott that's still hurting sales? What's the issue? 
So we're growing 3% in China uh, last year, and we expect to grow uh, mid-single digit this year, so you know, below previous rates. There's no doubt that there's been, in the last 12, 18 months, you know, a movement towards buying Chinese and, and being, you know, having Chinese pride. And I think the Western brands, including ours, need to prove to the Chinese consumer that we're there for the long term and we're relevant for the consumer. So the local Chinese brands have outgrown the Western brands in the last 12 to 18 months. But I'm confident that over time we'll, you know, we'll continue to build a very strong base in China. And it's one of our largest countries in the world. And as I said, we grew 3% in 2021, and we expect mid single-digit growth in 2022.